I went to the office, the tough was six in the morning, and my security people told me that there was a bomb in a bus in the heart of Jerusalem. I told them, we are not going to the office, we are going to the square in Jerusalem. I came to the square, the whole floor was covered with blood and parts of the bodies. Close to 50 people were killed. And there were thousands and thousands of people, Jewish people, around the square. When they saw me, they started to shout, murderer, betrayer, look what he did to us. What could I answer? They saw you as the cause of the bloodshed. Yeah, so, I mean, it's easy, you know, to give advice. And on the mall, it was repeated in Tel Aviv. And the next day, again in Jerusalem. And the next day in Ashkelon, four days, one after another. It was elections, and I know I'm going to lose it. But at least I fulfilled our obligation. So, you know, you can tell stories and write articles. It's different when you see it eye to eye in real terms. And that is my answer. Now, this is the picture of my niece, Madar. And on the September the 4th, 1997, she was killed. Two young Palestinians blew themselves up in Jerusalem, took their own lives, and several Israeli, the lives of several Israelis, including her. She was 13 years old. So when a 13-year-old little girl that you know and love gets killed like this, you know, you don't really know what to do. You don't know what to think, you don't know what to feel, you don't know how you're going to get back to life after that. Now, she was a granddaughter of a famous general, so this was big news. On top of that, she was also the granddaughter of Mr. Peace with Palestine. And now look what they did to him. Look what they did to his granddaughter. My, my father had already passed away by then. So this was even, this was big news. And when I landed, in, uh, in, when I arrived in Jerusalem, my sister's house on the ground, I could also, I saw the, the morning paper and on the front page it already said the granddaughter of General Peled was killed by Palestinians. And my sister's apartment was packed with mourners, of course, people who came to express their sorrow, but also reporters, endless stream of reporters. And when, after the funeral, she came out to greet and see everybody. She said two things that put me on a path. And I think it put her on a path and many of us kind of helped us to wrap our heads around this unspeakable tragedy. The first thing she was asked, of course, is about revenge and retaliation. And the comment that she made was, no real mother would want this to happen to another mother. Don't talk to me about revenge. Motherhood is a uniting force. It cuts through religion. It cuts through any differences that might exist between us. And if she's anything above all, is she is a mother. She's got three other boys, wonderful boys. And the second thing she said was, my government is responsible. My government brought these two young men to such a level of despair that they would take their own lives and take the lives of other innocent people, including a 13-year-old girl. The, the brutal oppression under which the Palestinians have to live because of us is the cause of this. That is why this is happening. If we want this to happen, we have to lift the oppression. As long as Palestinians are denied hope and denied freedom and denied water, and denied their land and their homes, this will continue to happen. I point a finger at my own government. And interestingly enough, Bibi Netanyahu, who's today prime minister, was prime minister then as well.